Girl, did you miss me? What's going on? Actually shaking. <laughs> I want those on the van. That's RV. What does that mean? Be bold. Do what you've never done before. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's a uh, well interesting day outside right now. Looks like it's gonna pour down rain, but. We're gonna have a good day anyways, despite that. It's actually not too bad outside temperature-wise. It's about 72 right now. It's humid, but we're at the Kennedy Space Center. I'm so, so, so excited. I have wanted to go here forever. And if you saw my video, when I visited Biosphere 2, it's linked up here. When I was in Arizona, that was where they were like trying to see if they could build these biodomes where people could sustain life on other planets. Well, I have a huge, huge interest in space exploration, anything space. If you haven't seen the series Expanse on Prime, go watch it. There's, I think, six series, maybe something like that. I think one more coming out, but I just really love it. It's something that I kind of grew up with. My dad instilled this love of space and exploration and planets and yeah, it was just really cool. I tried to actually go to the SpaceX Center down when I was in Texas, but that huge winter storm came through and I couldn't actually get out there to see it. There's no launches while I'm here, unfortunately. The next launch won't be until I think mid-April and it is just towards the end of March right now. So this is actually day two of my National Geographic Scenic Highway and Byway and Kennedy Space Center is along that Scenic Highway and Byway. It's in the book. You guys asked me a lot about that book that I'm using. It's called National Geographic Scenic Highways and Byways. There is a link below in the description box. The other thing I wanted to tell you is that Lily is not in here. She's actually back in the hotel. So in my previous video, I showed you that I was in a hotel room that I got because it was so darn hot here. Record high temperatures and high humidity. Being in the van makes it a little difficult. It just makes it really uncomfortable. Yes, I do have an AC in there. You'll just have to watch the video to find out more about that. I don't want to keep talking about that particular topic all the time. But Lily is very safe in the hotel and this is kind of the other reason why I got the hotel room is because I want her to be comfortable and I don't want to have to worry about her being out here. This is uh, kind of like a half day to almost full day trip out here and adventure so you know she just wouldn't be comfortable in the van plus like if it's too hot you know she can't stay in here i'm just waiting for the gate to open the gates open at 9 30 it's 9 15 right now and uh, there's a huge line behind me i'm glad i got here early <laughs> how cool is this oh my gosh i'm so excited we gotta go get our bus tickets Got my picture taken in front of the NASA globe. How cool is that? For the eyes of the world now look into space, to the moon and to the planets beyond. And we have vowed that we shall not see it governed by a hostile flag of conquest, but by a banner of freedom and peace. <laughs> we are in and take a look at this. Holy cow. We've got some rockets behind us. <laughs> what a good day. Oh, wow. So these rockets behind us actually represent the earlier missiles and rockets that they had that helped really start space exploration. So this was the early days, and then we're gonna get to the present day and future as we move along through the park. All right, and they let us in. We have a Mars Rover vehicle navigator, it says. That is so cool. Look at the tires. <laughs> I want those on the van. What do you think, will it work? It says this thing weighs 5,500 pounds and it only goes two to three miles per hour. Not very fast. Weight on Earth is 5,500 pounds, but on Mars, 2,090. All of the rovers that have been to Mars so far have been automated and given instruction from operators on Earth. That's pretty impressive. That thing's huge. 
I'm just looking for the stairs to climb up into that thing. If this tells you the size, look at that. <laughs> what do you think I'm gonna say? It's humid. <laughs> I can feel the sweat dripping on my back right now. Uh, but we are waiting for the bus. There's nobody behind me right now, so I'm taking my mask off. But we're waiting for the bus. We're gonna go to the Apollo Space Center. You have to take a bus over there. They said it's about 15 to 20 minutes long for a bus ride, and then you get to drop, they drop you off, and you just tour around the area, and then get back on a bus when you're ready, and come back over here. So I thought I'd do that first thing, get that out of the way, because you have to reserve the bus. Now, here's the situation with the bus. It was a little bit confusing coming over here. So you cannot reserve the bus until you actually get here. They have barcode scanners where you can scan this barcode and make your reservations. Or the easy way, at least I thought it was the easy way, download the app before you get here. There is a section in there for you to go in and reserve your ticket for the Apollo Space Center. It was super easy to do that. And it's free, it's part of your admission into the park, which at the time of this recording was $57 for the day, and the Apollo Space Center is included in that. The bus tour is included in with that, but you do have to pay for parking, so it was $10 for me. A little fun fact that I found out about mission control where we're going, once the boosters clear the launching pad, mission responsibility for the aircraft actually shifts from the Kennedy Space Center to the Houston Johnson Space Center. So one of the things that they're doing with social distancing on the bus is they're only seating every other row in here to keep distance between everybody and of course wearing a mask. And it's nice and cool in here too. You can't see the smile on my face, but I am so, so, so excited. I cannot wait. The building itself is a single one-story building, 525 feet high. You could put 9,000 five-room apartments in that building, 120,000 people in it, and the low bay area, that's the area that sticks out to the right, we could put a 500-door shopping mall. Please move all the way to the front of the theater to make room for the guests behind you. Our presentation will begin shortly. When I was a kid, I used to dream about flying through space. We choose to go to the moon in this detail and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. We had been more than 16 minutes into space, and now we were going to the moon. We stood on the eve of the longest, most dangerous journey that any man had ever undertaken. And it would be taken by Frank Borman, James Lovell, and William Andrews, the crew of Apollo 8. This is the firing room, launch control for the Apollo missions. This is not a mocker. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. The tragedy of Apollo 1 had put us a year and a half behind. It was a few days before Christmas, 1968 when Apollo 8 sat on the pad. She was the first of a new kind, a moon rocket. Jim Lovell and Bill Andrews had made their final preparations before taking that long ride out to the waiting spacecraft. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8, right here where it actually happened.
absolutely amazing. The whole building was actually shaking <laughs> as the rocket was taking off. Such an amazing experience. Like, actually raised the hair on my arms. Amazing. Wow, look at this behind me. Rocket. I'm gonna attempt to get the magnitude of this rocket by panning across. Boosters? It's just so huge, I can't get it all in. There we go. It keeps going and going all the way to the end. Down there. Columbia, Houston, over. Right by my mic. I didn't go over. This may be a gorgeous swimming lake. Beautiful. As soon as the eagle reappears, things begin to go wrong. Right, okay. With the vital computer links temporarily holding, the moment of decision is now. Okay, I'll flag the colors. Don't have the landing retro. Go, line up, go. Guys, go. Control, go. Delcom, go. GSC, go. Econ, go. Surgeon, go. Capcom, we're go for landing. Serious navigation error. He thinks you're a little bit long downrange. At these speeds, three seconds long means missing the safe landing zone by three miles. Ninety seconds of fuel remaining. Now less than 200 feet, and the Eagle is too low to safely abort back into orbit. They call this part of the flight plan Dead Man's Curve. For one incredible moment, we are one people with one history, watching our destiny unfold. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. It was a moment shared by an entire world. With these first steps, mankind stood on the highest ground, and we saw our planet as our home port in the endless ocean of space. The first mission had stayed for only one day, but over the next three and a half years, five more Apollo missions visited the moon, and with each one, we stayed longer. The thing that my mom can't understand is I'm terrified of heights, but I want to be an astronaut. 1963, 1964, 1967. This one is from 1969. This is a vehicular suit. Island Shepard on Apollo 14. I love that they provided this real life mock-up behind us of them excavating on the moon, walking on it. You can see the footprints down there. It's pretty incredible. If you could only see the smile on my face right now. <laughs> Okay, you guys know I seriously am going to geek out on this. So these astronauts took seeds, tree seeds, to the moon and carried them, brought them back, and they planted this tree garden 
to represent every single astronaut who had been on the moon. <laughs> so, so cool. Lots of trees. 12 trees all together. Michael Collins, Neil Armstrong, and Edwin Buzz Aldrin statue. Wow. And the American flag. This is just a seriously cool garden. And what a great memorial. I'm going to take this off. There's nobody over here. What a great memorial and tribute to the astronauts. It gives me goosebumps. I like totally geek out over this stuff. <laughs> I mean, you have to think about what it takes to do something like this. Like, I talk all the time about overcoming fear and being courageous, and this takes it to a whole new level, guys. Like, could you do this? I mean, I remember when I was a kid, I don't remember what year it was, there was the teacher that got onto the spaceship to do a mission up to space, and it blew up. And that freaked me out, scared me. I saw it live on TV. Teachers immediately shut off the television so that, you know, we could figure out what the heck just happened. It was crazy. And some of these people gave their lives for exploration, for history. It's pretty incredible, guys. The journey starts here, though. By going behind the gates at Kennedy Space Center today, we each took our own small step toward the future. Atlantis behind me. Isn't that so cool? We've got our very own RV, NASA RV. You missed your mama. I know I was gone. I haven't been gone from you like that in a long time, huh? I got back from the Kennedy Space Center and I had an amazing time there. But I tell you what, I was pooped. It was rather hot. <laughs> surprise, surprise. 
humid and quite a few people actually. So I'm glad I went early and I was there for almost five hours, five hours, yeah. But I got some cool stuff. You know how I love hats. Well, first let me show you, I got this sticker. Be bold, I love that. I got a hat, NASA trucker hat. You know how I like my trucker hats. Yeah, I'm gonna have to fix that bill too. NASA. And I got some digital pictures where I took poses by a green screen and then they superimposed all of it and I'll show you that right here. I had such a blast. Wow, it was really, really incredible. Way beyond what I expected and I really, really loved it. I just found out that they reopened only three weeks ago. So wow, I feel very fortunate that I was able to get in there because if I had missed this one after missing the ones down in Houston and then the SpaceX Center down in South Padre, that would have sucked. I'm gonna go hop in the shower, clean myself up and Get ready to just, you know what? This is my last day in the hotel. I'm going to jump in bed and watch TV and movies for the rest of the night. <laughs> Sounds good, doesn't it? Look at all the stories we saw today with our history of space and space exploration. One of the major takeaways that I had from there was the courage that these men and women had to not only like all the people behind the scenes to build these machines that would put humans into outer space, but the humans who actually volunteered to go up and do space exploration and some of them lost their lives doing it. What I feel like I really got out of it was courage and this is why I like the sticker, be bold, be completely bold. What does that mean? Be bold. Do what you've never done before. Do all the things that I've been talking to you about, which is overcoming your fears, figuring out what your dreams are for your life. What do you wanna do? What's your bucket list? What are you doing right now that's not serving you, that is keeping you from actually accomplishing your dreams? Be bold and go after your dreams. It can't get any better than that. Be bold, I like it. I love you so much. Again, thank you for joining me on this journey today. And you guys are always so supportive of me, giving me all kinds of comments and stuff and help along my journey. So I really appreciate it. And I will see you in tomorrow's video.